getting ready for that game? Well, usually the, the the first game is sometimes the toughest because you're you know you're you're watching everything, so I think that's that's a tough situation. Um, you know, you're looking at every game last year as opposed to maybe a four or five game breakdown because you have the time. You, know, you spend a lot of time in the summer, so it, it again it makes you jump through a lot of hoops, makes you think about a lot of what ifs. Um, it makes some things difficult. Front row, Dave. Luke, can you give some insights on depth at corner? It looks like you guys have a very good top three, but maybe who's going to round out the two deep there at corner for you? Because I know Marshawn Lattimore still. Yeah, we, I mean, we got to get some guys healthy. This, was, this will be a big week um, to see what some of those young guys can do, some of those freshmen. Obviously, you've got, uh, you know, you've got the two guys. You've got Gary on and, and, and Eli. <clears throat> Damon Webb's another guy that's, that's played a lot in there or uh, you know, has played last year for us, so he'll be the next guy. Marshawn, we've got to see how he can do this week. And then, and then a couple of those young freshman guys. You know, we, we've got some different plans um, based on whatever would happen, but uh, you know, uh, we'll have to kind of wait and see throughout this next seven, eight days just to see who, who we think is ready and what plan we'd have to be able to go with. If you needed one of those true freshmen, who might it be? Guys like Denzel Ward or Eric Clever Williams. I mean, I think right off the bat, you know, maybe Denzel. Um, speed wise, straight speed wise, the guy that uh, you know you could stick out there and, and feel comfortable with. But um, you know, we'll have a couple different plans based on on who that could be. If if you know we had to move some guys around, we could. But um, you know, again, this next these next eight days, just finding out how uh, how Marshawn will be and you know Damon and, and different things like that will be something we'll have to we'll have to kind of wrestle through um, as a staff the next few weeks. Second row left. When you face a tight end like six foot five Bucky Hodges, who does that put pressure on on your defense? Is it the D line because they need to get enough pressure to keep him in blocking? Is it your linebackers? I mean, just what is the challenge of facing a tight end like Bucky Hodges? Well, I think I think any any time you got a guy with versatility, it makes it difficult. I think you're seeing it all over the NFL. Um, that's one of those unique positions that that those guys have. Um, they're not just protection guys are not just block guys are not just pass guys they're guys that can kind of do it all and, and he's one of those guys so they, they, they're a little bit of a matchup nightmare at times um, you got to know where they are him being a little bit more in particular is one of those big go-to guys so um, they, they, they pose some problems in the uh, in the matchup category um, but that's that's just kind of par for the course that they'll, they'll do a good job of mixing up their personnel and leaving him in the game whether there's a wide out where there's a tight end where there's a fullback um, just gives you some different things you have to prepare for and know where he's at we ask Ed Warner, how far his offensive line was ahead of where you guys were last year. Uh, for you, how far is your defense ahead of where you were last time that you faced Virginia Tech? Well, I mean, you, you, you got to wait till you can actually be evaluated. You know, so that's one of those, those tough things. I think we feel, at least through camp, we've had an ability to work on our scheme and, and the things that we're going to do um, throughout the entire year as opposed to having to prepare for Navy. So I, I think we feel like we're ahead of where we were um, with the ability to not just you know, prepare for, for Virginia Tech, but prepare ourselves for the entire season uh, for the body of work that we'll, we'll have to do. But obviously the test uh, will be Monday night. Front row, Bill. <coughs> Actually, the same question I asked Ed. Uh, how much did you watch tape of last year's Virginia Tech game uh, in light of the fact that you guys obviously didn't play very well? Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely something. I mean, again, you, you learn from that stuff and you learn from the history. And you not just watch it to, to, to harp on the negative things, to, to show our guys how well, how well we did not play, um, but also to watch what it is that they did. Obviously, they had a game plan and, and they executed their game plan better than we did. Um, so it's something that we spent a lot of time you know, evaluating. But again, we're not going to sit there and harp on the negative stuff. We're going to make sure our guys are ready to play, promote the positives and those kinds of things, but make sure we learn from the history of what happened. No, I mean, it'll be one of those things. We we got eight days left. I mean, this is there's talking about two young kids, um, and every day is important. So you know, it's a it's the constant battle. Every day we're trying to evaluate exactly what it is that uh, you know we see from both of them, and, and both of them are going to play, and both of them have to play, and we need them to play, and we need them to play well. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a you know committee committee kind of guy, and who, who will get the nod? I think we still got a few days to try to figure that out for ourselves. Second row left, uh, Ari. Coach, um, two springs ago. Chris Worley and Darren Lee were kind of neck and neck to try to, you know, get on the field. And then Darren Lee had the progression he did now, this potential first-round draft pick next year. But what, how has Chris Worley kind of handled maybe being the guy in the middle between some pretty fantastic freshmen and, and somebody that he was neck and neck with? And is Chris Worley just somebody who's really good but just not quite as good as Darren Lee? Well, I mean, again, I think, I think if you're going to talk about a specific person, Chris has had as good a camp as, as anybody we've had on the defense side of the ball, to be honest with you. I mean... Um, 
not just me as a linebacker coach, but everybody kind of has noticed, you know, the, his ability to play football and do the things we asked that guy to do in that position. So, you know, again, we got to find ways to get guys like Chris on the field, and there'll be some opportunities for him, not just sub and Darren, but but really, truly opportunities to find ways in some other packages to uh, to get him on the field to show his, some of his talents. And he's the kind of guy that, that understands the game of football. He can make plays, but he has to be put in those situations. And sometimes that is tough when you're playing behind a guy who's, who's as talented as what Darren has and what Darren has done for us on the field. But as coaches, you know, we put a little bit of pressure on ourselves to find ways to get guys like that on the field uh, to give them opportunities to, to, to make plays. Have you noticed that he's been a sport about you know, being in this situation? And do you think he kind of understands the, the reality of Hey, maybe in a few years that he is going to No, I think they all do. I mean, that, that's one thing the coach does an unbelievable job every single day of talking about competition and how you make yourself better. Um, and that's competing with one another. And I know in our room, um, we're always talking about how we're going to push each other and, and to have the ability. There's nothing greater than competition. And whether a guy's, you know, a great player or not, for his ability to, to, to have that knowing that someone's right on his heels and, and someone can go in there and do the job that they're doing. And if they have the opportunity, they might do it better. So. Uh, that competition has been created. We saw it last year with, with Curtis Grant. It increased his productivity and his playability, just having you know, uh, Raquan McMillan right behind him. And always that, not, not the fear of somebody else going in, but the ability that, that you know there's somebody else behind you that's going to push you every single day. Far left, Dave. Luke, you played on some pretty good teams here with really high expectations. Obviously, expectations are sky high this year. Have you drawn on your experience as a player here and maybe shared that with some of your units or your assistant coaches as you get ready to climb this mountain? Yeah, we do. And, and you know, we're always trying to look for things that we can compare to. You know, sometimes um, you look back at, uh, you know, I, I try to bring it up. I haven't, I haven't done it a whole bunch just yet with our guys, but as, as a staff, we've talked about it. Um, the transition from 2002 to 2003 with, in theory, you know, having a lot of guys coming back, maybe a, a more talented team coming back. Um, than you did in the year before when, when the same kind of things happened where you had a, you know, obviously great success in a national championship. But learning from those kinds of things, you know, you know what it's really about. It's not about talent. Every single year sitting in these seats, there's, there's going to be enough talent, as Coach always tells you. Um, it's the ability for those guys to gel together, for those guys to come together to find out how they're going to handle those adverse situations. You know, last year, I mean, high insight looking back at it, might have been one of the greatest things that happened to us, to have something like what happened last year at that time um, have those guys the ability to pull themselves together and to, to, to grow from that and to build from that. That's not what we're asking for again, but, but the reality is that, you know, we, Coach has done a great job in, in camp at trying to find those situations where he can put their backs against the wall to see how those guys will gel and grow together um, as a unit, as a team, as a defense, and as an offense. And, uh, you know, so the, the expectations are always big. Um, but it really, people think that it's about scheme and different things like that. But the reality is, it's 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 really how those guys all come together. It's what they truly believe deep down in their hearts. How they handle those adverse situations, and uh, can they stay together and handle the the human elements that all the hype and things bring bring to the to the forefront. And would you guess that because of what you went through personally as a player, that you might have a little edge on? Picking that up before it gets to, gets to be a problem? Well, we're always looking for it. I think that the unique thing is is having the ability to play here and be here for so long. You know a little bit more of what's out there. I mean, obviously, the, 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 the attention that those guys get. I tell them all the time, you know, it's harder to handle praise than it is criticism. And we got to make sure we're, we're handling those things the right way, watching those things, and, and not allowing the, us to have those things affect us in a negative way. Um, and we say negative way, we mean, you know, you know, in ways where all of a sudden show up in little things and little things add up. So um, if there's anything that Coach Meyer does and Coach Mick does is they're watching those things very, very close because uh, sometimes we get a little bit clouded with the, the, the things that we're doing on an everyday basis. So they're, they're brought to our attention pretty much every day. Front row, Tim. Yeah, Lucas, y'all move into a game week. Uh, Joey Bosa can't play in the first game. I remember a couple years ago when Carlos Hyde couldn't play for a couple of games. <clears throat> Y'all actually used him on the scout team, from what we heard. Will you use Joey in the same way, and how do you keep him involved, uh, et cetera, this week? Yeah, it's a unique situation because he's out for one game. So it's not like something that you can completely take him out of the, out of the mix because, you know, obviously we're preparing for an entire season. It's a journey. Um, so, but, but this is where the, eight, the next eight days really become important to us. You've asked about the development of, of Sam and, and, and Jalen, and that's one of those big things is, hey, now, now it's game week, and we have to have the ability to put those guys in, take Joey out of the mix, um, 
whether he goes down to the scout team or not, that's going to be a little bit of what coach and them need uh, down there from, from the scout units, taking him off on the side and make sure we're preparing him and keeping him in shape and those kinds of things for the, for the rest of the season, yeah. Um, but now it's kind of a little bit more of a focus for us as coaches and the, the guys that are going to go with us down to Blacksburg and focus on those guys, making sure we know exactly who it is, what it is, and what's the plan that we got for those guys. Uh, what have you seen from Joey specifically on the field from the standpoint of keeping his focus? Uh, there was a report last week or so about someone seeing him being detained by the police and whatever. I don't know if that, you know, obviously y'all y'all would know about that stuff, but uh, nothing happened from that. But what have you told him? What what have you seen from him from a from a focus standpoint? No, it, it's 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 been a little bit humbling, and you can see, you know, again, whether it's what has happened or another year of maturity. You know, I, I can seriously sit here and tell you that Joey Bosa is a different kid, a different player than he was last year. And in what ways is the ways you see him on the field. You know, the ways he goes about practice, the ways he goes, he went about camp. Um, he has definitely matured. And again, you're talking about a guy who's 20 years old. You know, every year you're going to see some things in that growth. And that's really what you're looking for. You know, do, do, do you continue? Obviously, his play speaks for itself. But us as coaches that are around him every single day, Larry Johnson that's with him every single day, he can tell you the maturity process that, that he has had. And obviously, he's in an accelerated program for one of those guys that has uh, you know, the levels and the ability and who knows how many years they're here. Um, you have to accelerate their process. And it's really, I can tell you that uh, he's a definitely a different practice player than he was a year ago, the way he goes about his business and studies the game. Virginia Tech has professed to be a little more wide open, a little more spread, whatever you want to call it, through the offseason. Who knows how much is smoke and mirrors. But what do you guys kind of expect from them from an offensive standpoint in general? Well, that's one of the, the, the things of a, of a first game. You know, I think in, even when you watch some of those, like, you know, I said to one of the coaches the other day, I said, do you think they'll ever come up with a preseason game for colleges? Because, you know, you go home and you see some of these preseason NFL games and guys legitimately get to go out there and play and play against somebody besides their own players. And, you know, you actually get to see what you got. And um, so it's a little bit difficult for us, just like preparing for the first game. You know, you can hear a lot, you can see a lot, and you can talk about what they did in spring. But the reality is, you know, I'm sure they're, you know, kind of searching and, and trying to find different ways that they can improve what it is they did, enhance what it is they did. So you kind of prepare for everything, like we talked about with, you know, whether it's a two quarterback system or not. You know, you're watching not only 12 or 13 games from last year, or even peeking back at what guys did in the past based on their personnel. Um, so it's a, it's a lot of that, uh, you know, chasing and finding those those hidden things those ghosts you might be chasing but you know you're prepared for about everything in that first week and uh you know you got to go out and you got to play